Welcome back to the video series on the Play Framework using Scala. We left off last time we had run into a bug trying to send a request from the client to the server to our validate route. And with a little digging, I found that the problem was we were sending just username and password. Turns out the body needs to be stringified. So we actually need to convert it to a string to send it across. While working on this, I also went ahead and added a CSRF token to this so that I could take out the plus CSRF. Okay, so with that addition into the JavaScript, we now have the ability to type in, so mark in PASS works and it prints out true. It is kind of interesting to see what happens if we give it something that doesn't work. Uh, right now it's giving us some HTML. And when I first saw that, I was wondering, well, what's going on with that? Well, that is because in the situation where this doesn't work, we're actually giving back the views login to. We really just want to return false. I'd tell them that, that we don't have the, the data here. And so now, if we rerun this, and we give it a bad login, we get false. Okay. So what should happen when, on the client side, when we get back this result? Right now we're just logging whatever data we have. I actually pulled it in as text. Res.json. Uh, what should we be doing? Well, it turns out if the login is false, You know, then we could actually just stay here. We could clear out the fields. Uh, we could throw up a message on this saying that the login had failed. There's a number of things that, that we could do. Uh, putting up something that says the login has failed is probably a, a good idea, but that's uh, but what we shouldn't do is show them a task list, right? Uh, so if it succeeds though, we are supposed to hide the login area recall that we have this login section here, we would want to hide it in that situation and make the task section visible. Okay, so instead of just printing out the data, I want to say if data will do one thing, else we'll do another. So if it responds true, I want to Take document dot get element by ID of the login section dot hidden equals true and document dot get element by ID of the tasks and I cannot remember if I made that singular or plural singular task section dot hidden equals false. Okay, let's see what that does. So if I type in an invalid login, right now it should do basically nothing, which is what it did. But if I type in the correct login, it should switch here. Now note, this wasn't populated with anything. Uh, because we didn't put anything there. At that point, we so there are really two ways that we could handle this. One is that we could make it so that when you log in correctly, it automatically responds instead of just saying true or false, it goes ahead and tells you, hey, these are the tasks. Um, that would be when I think of design, there are you know, there are different ways that we could do this. Honestly, I think there is a value in having just a completely separate call. If this were some API, where you can request the um, request the set of tasks for a user, I, I think that would be a useful thing to be able to do and have it stand on its own. And for that reason, I would probably 
stick with something closer to the design of what we had before. By the way, I'm going to get rid of data. We we don't need that all, uh, at this point. That was it was fun for testing stuff. So we have task list three, which will get our set of tasks from the the collection and give them back. Uh, I'm actually going to make this another post request and I'm not sending sensitive data across. In fact, I'm not really sending any data across other than the session. Fine, we'll go with a get for that. Okay, so what should happen with task list three? It's going to go to task list in here, so we need to have a def task list. It is an action with an implicit request. And we want to, A, we need to check that they are logged in. And we had to do that previously. When the task list was, requ was requested, we had to see if the session had a username. We really want to do something a lot like what we had done before, but with some minor differences. And the, the primary difference is what we're going to respond with. We are not going to give back views again. Remember, we're not generating HTML for this. What we want to give back instead is some JSON. Uh, and so if they're not logged in, what should we give them? Actually, how about like an empty array? Because it turns out that's what we're going to, to do here is we need to give back the sequence. And actually, if I undo this, instead of making a view out of this, I want to say JSON dot to JSON of the getting the tasks. And note that works. And the reason why it works is because our data model currently is working with very simple types. They're not even case classes. They're things that the play JSON already knows about. It knows about things like sequences and strings and Booleans. And so we don't even have to provide anything to help it do the serialization to JSON. Uh, what about in the unhappy case? Well, then how about a JSON dot to JSON sequence dot empty. Okay. Uh, of string. Okay, so if they are logged in, if they if they have a session that gives their username, then we will give them back the set of tasks. Otherwise, we won't. And what we want to do to make use of this is inside of here, after we have uh, set these changes, we'd probably want to call a, a load tasks function. Okay. I'll go ahead and put a to do here. Okay. Function load tasks. So what load tasks is going to do is it is going to do another fetch. In this case, it is the, uh, it is a route we don't have here, a task list route, which means we probably need it in the main. How about, let's see, we're going to need to do a create, we're going to need to do a delete, we're going to need to do an add, so this is a new route that we didn't, a tasks route. Task list. Okay, and so in our JSON, we can pull off the tasks route. Uh, 
in our JavaScript here, we can pull out that routing and we can do a fetch from it. Fetch tasks route. Because this is a, a fairly straightforward Git, we're not really sending any data. Once again, it's our session that's doing it. So I don't need to put in additional arguments for that. Then well, we'll get some result and we pull the JSON out of it. You might wonder why we have to do this. Turns out that the results JSON, so the body of the result is not by default read all the way in. And that's because if you don't need it, that is potentially additional uh, data that can take time to do. And this facilitates the asynchronous nature of, of what we're doing here with JavaScript. Remember, JavaScript runs in a single thread. So we really need this to, to give up control uh, when it's not actively using it. So we don't want to sit there and read in the whole body and parse it in the main, uh, in our code, because that could cause things, especially for a large body, to, uh, to not work well. And so what we get back would be the tasks. And what we'd want to do with those tasks is add them into the, uh, into the HTML. We're out of time for this video, so we'll come back in the next video. We'll finish this up and have it so it takes those tasks that we get and sticks them, stick them into the web page so that they appear. And then we can work on things like add and, uh, and removing as well as creating new users.